Hi there. I'm hoping that you're、uh, staying safe during this pandemic thing.、Uh, today I'm going to be talking about my network and how I've set that up because、I've, some people have actually asked, and I think that the best、uh, thing for me to do is just to make a video about it. So here we go. The plan for today is quite simple. I'll show you where I've set up my network and,、uh, well, the gear and what gear I'm using and how it's all running. And I'll be showing you some of the、uh, wired machines. What I've done is that I've set up my rack, if you can actually call it that,、uh, in the center of the building. So、uh, most of the cables are roughly the same length. What you see at the top is the printing machine, which is a brother MFC J6530DW.、Uh, it's a good machine and I enjoy using it, but the color profiles can be a bit difficult to set up because it's been developed to use Microsoft ICM and profile straight off of the screen.、Uh, but I found good enough、um, uh, uh, ICC profiles for it.、Um, underneath it, Is the rack shelf, which is essentially、uh, holding the router and all that stuff. The router is an Asus RT AC5300.、Uh, they call it a router, but honestly, once we dive into the complexity of it, you'll see how this is way more than just a simple router and access point.、Uh, behind it are the TP Link TLSG10E Layer 2 managed switch with eight ports. And、uh, the Virgin Media Hub,、uh, which is、uh, basically serving as a DOCSIS、um, uh, modem.、Uh, and on the floor sits the power distro and power supplies,、uh, memory stick,、uh, which has been, well, and a memory stick, which has been set up as、um, the handy network storage,、uh, fully managed by the router itself, by its SMB server. We also have the Philips Hue Hub, which is part of the Hue Light system、uh, in my room, which is essentially the lights that you can see behind me. And there's also a WAN switch. Now, the RJ45 WAN switch is used to switch the WAN connection from the Virgin Media modem to an auxiliary Ethernet cable up here, right next to that USB extension,、um, which I plug into the laptop in order to share the laptop's connection with the network, just in case the Virgin Media connection goes down. The router also allows me to have、uh, two WAN connections and juggle between both of them at the same time, and that's pretty cool. That's where that USB cable comes into play because I can plug in my phone in there, for example, while I'm in modem mode or a 4G dongle and use that as a WAN too if I want, which is pretty cool. And the computer is a Dell Dimension 4300. It's a single core Pentium 4 machine from 20 years ago.、Uh, I'm not daily driving it, of course. I plugged it in roughly just to show you the interfaces, but we'll go through them on, on the screen in a bit.、Um, and I like old computers, so yeah. This is roughly the networking page.、Uh, you can see things such as traffic monitoring.、Uh, this is the Virgin Hub showing logs on my connection to the CMTS, as well as the number of channels I'm using and what they're doing. And you can even see the modulation scheme and all that. Um, and this is a managed switch, and I have other unmanaged switches, but this particular one is the main LAN, so this is where I worry about that basically.、Uh, well, the main wire links. Let me show you how the cables are running. So I'm running a peer to peer network with CAP6 cable for, gig,、uh, for gigabit Ethernet, and、uh, as I mentioned, The TP Link switch takes care of all the main wired links. The first two ports on the, on the,、uh, the TP Link switch、uh, lead to the living room. This is the living room.、Uh, in here, we have an older Samsung TV, the Xbox you've been seeing in my other video, and a Lenovo computer.、Um, one of the CAT6 cables plugs straight into the Lenovo machine, and the other one goes to this, which is an unmanaged switch, which essentially links everything else to the main switch. Now, you may ask, why not set up a hub since it's cheaper and、uh, you know, all of these devices plug in for a single link to the main switch anyway? Yes, it seems like a cheaper option, but we are transferring large files, and in case two or more devices use the bandwidth of the hub in an attempt to unicast towards a single device, the, the hub will then cut the bandwidth in half or, or more across all devices and some of the internet speed with it, because you know, a hub only supports broadcasting. Whereas a switch has the ability to unicast and support full bandwidth across all ports individually based on MAC addresses. 
So in order to do this with a how, I would I would have needed to roll the subnet mask forward and subnet the whole thing. And of course, that is layer two networking. So I would have had uh, I would have needed extra routers and complicated routes just to get it running. You know. So in other words, it would have been uh, more expensive actually, not cheaper. Um, but yeah, you can also see the routers uh, network storage showing up here among, among other things. And of course, every computer has access to any other computer in the network, which is uh, well as well as the printer. Which is the whole point of this. Um, next, we have the uh, the third port of the of that switch goes to bedroom one, which has my old workstation PC in here, which now serves as a media client. Um, as you can see, the computer has uh, access to everything else, just like uh, um, just like I mentioned. Um, next up is the fourth port, which links to bedroom number two. This is an unused bedroom. This machine has been in here for uh, has been in here, so I figured why not set it up as a network machine? It's a quad core machine from 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 the core two era. It's uh, it's actually quite usable. Um, next up, we have bedroom number three on the upper floor. Uh, this is my bedroom. Port five is linking to my main workstation machine, and port six goes to this unmanaged switch. Uh, basically the same idea as in the living room. Uh, this room doubles as my work room as well. This is where I'm filming my stuff. So as you can see the network is uh, running just like uh, you would expect. I can see the, uh, the router storage and all that. Uh, and last but not least, bedroom number four. This is uh, this is more of a storage room. Uh, it has an old AMD machine, also network as you'd expect. This machine is also 20 years old but unlike the Dell it has a twin core 64-bit CPU, uh, so it's good enough for basic media consumption such as YouTube and Netflix. Um, but let me tell you a bit about this machine. I'm, I have a lot of fun making these old machines work. But this one was a bit of a pain uh, because it's using S-Video to send to the old CRT TV. Um, and at first I bought an NVIDIA 7000 series graphics card because it, it well it didn't really matter as long as it had S-Video out. But it turns out that NVIDIA did not make Windows 8 or 7 or Vista drivers for anything below the 8000 series. And without the right drivers in place, the S-Video out will not send the Chroma channel. So you, you basically just get a black and white image. Um, also, this may be a 64-bit CPU, but the microcode for these CPUs is not compatible with Windows 10 or 8.1 at 64-bit, only 32. So... Um, you can only use uh, Windows 8.0 and below, so that just in case you are wondering why I'm running Windows 8.0, that's why basically. But anyway, uh, the last port on the switch uh, is then uplinked to the main router. Everything else downstairs plugs into them in, straight into the router itself. Um, yeah, so I guess that uh, I guess that, that that was the tour of the network. Um, there are, of course, a few phones and uh, tablets and a bunch of other 2.4 uh, gigahertz devices, but I'm not going to go through all these. Uh, right, let's go into the let's get into the management side of things because this is the fun bit. So I'll show you. Um, let me just log in. So. Basically, this is the router page. Uh, this is where I'm going to be talking about the router extensively. Um, I'm running the Merlin firmware, so that's what that is. Basically, I'm going to be starting with the wireless, I think. Uh, this is the advanced uh, side of things. So, it's using eight antennas and amps for uniformity, and it also it has, uh, well, for a total of three. Uh, 8.2.11 AC radios which use beamforming and radar and that's uh, actually working pretty well so under wireless settings this is where you set up your radio so you can select um, the uh, authentication method um, using personal VPA encryption all that stuff uh, you know the key the the password the, uh, the channels but before you set up all this what you should do is you, serve, you should serve it the side so what this is what the side survey does is it, it scans all the networks around you, and then it shows you uh, what, who's doing what, and then what channels are uh, they're using, and what band, and uh, uh, what encryption. So that's that. Next up, we have VPS, which I'm oh, not really using because everything else is pretty much assigned. Uh, wireless bridging. This allows you to use the thing uh, as a repeater, but I'm I don't need that because it's powerful enough to reach everywhere. Wireless Mac filter, this allows you to filter um, Macs, 
essentially so you can block you know certain devices radius this has to do with um, if you're using the VPA enterprise encryption for your uh, for your passwords and everything this is uh, well this has to do with that so there's extra security that you have to set up now the pro uh, page uh, this is cool basically you select your radio up here and then you have all these settings for, uh, for 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 the radio, and I mean everything from enabling, disabling, uh, you know, the TX uh, uh, bursting that uh, you can do the beacon interval. Um, uh, you can do your modulation scheme if you want to use something else. Um, you can have uh, a multi-time, uh, multi-user MIMO, um, beam forming, universal beam forming. You can you can set the amp power, so all that stuff, which is pretty cool. And uh, roaming block list, um, this is if you're using AI mesh, I'm not using AI mesh. So yeah, that's pretty much the Wi-Fi. It's, uh, it's quite cool. Um, next up, we have the LAN. Now, as far as the LAN goes, I'm running a single subnet with a Class C 24-bit mask. Um, the whole machine is supposed to be running in Class C anyway. Besides, if I needed more than that, then this is not the, the gear for the job in the first place. So there's no point rolling back the mask and uh, you know at all, even though it sounds so nerdy and cool and I like that. But you know, it, I'm just running into trouble. She's just driving the the HTTP server out of spec, and there's no point uh, basically in doing that. Now, on the other hand, I could subnet my Class C network further, of course, and I actually left room for two subnets. But right now, I don't need that. Um, in fact, I never needed to subnet. Besides, I have the option to make a guest Wi-Fi uh, network anyway, and as far as security goes, I prefer uh, to set it, up, set it up in Windows when it comes to the wired side of things, so it works for me. I'm not an enterprise, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Anyway, as far as the LAN goes, uh, that's where you set up your IP. Um, the DHCP server, as I said, is supposed to be running in, a, in a, a Class C, so there you go. Um, yeah. You can set up, uh, you know, DNS and all that stuff. For I've got a manually assigned uh, IP address in here for one of my devices. DNS filtering. Uh, I've actually got. Uh, I'll show you the security side of things in a second. Because um, well, I don't necessarily need that. Now, LAN routes. I know I'm actually not using any, um, but you can set them up just to, just in case. There's IPTV as well. If you use that kind of thing, and uh, the switch control, uh, which is basically this, um, NAT acceleration, I've got it on. Now, next up, we got the WAN. Essentially, I can set it up as a USB WAN, just uh, just like that, which I have actually done, because I'm using two of them. I've, I'm basically just using, obviously, the, um, the main Ethernet one. Um, now, you can have automatic IP uh, if your uh, ISP has a DHCP server, so obviously I'm using that, because they do. Uh, you know, NAT, WAN, blah blah blah, all that basic stuff. Um, nice thing about this is that you can set up a DNS, well, your own DNS server for uh, the whole network, which I have done. This is Cloudflare's uh, DNS. Highly recommend it. It's quite cool. Um, you know, have a look yourself. And then, uh, as far as uh, special requirements for ISP from the ISP goes, this is so what you can do here is you can uh, request um, WAN IPs. Because, for example, a few years ago, my ISP was having trouble serving some WAN IPs, so I requested another, basically. Um, some of the servers were not, well, some of the servers were returning my requests, while others were not. For example, you could download Amazon's web page, but you couldn't download eBay's, or you could have Google, but not YouTube. It, it was kind of a, you know, it was kind of a pain, but this awesome router actually allows me to do that sort of thing. So I fixed it before they uh, fixed it in their <laughs> network, so that was... I also have the option to use two WANs, uh, which I have mentioned before. I actually have two of them set up. The primary WAN is basically using uh, Ethernet, um, and the secondary WAN is using USB, but it can also be Ethernet. Uh, you can have in, any of them uh, in primary, and the, the, the dual WAN mode actually. Uh, the failover is a bit of a redundant uh, kind of setting, so just in case one of them fails, then the other one comes up. Or you can have the load balance, and that's basically just using both of them at the same time for one awesomeness. Uh, essentially, that's the best way to describe that. <laughs> um, anyways, next up we have port triggering. I haven't got any of that. 
Next up, we got port forwarding, which I'm not using at the moment, and then DMZ. Uh, I haven't got any apps that need that. Um, uh, DDNS, this I am using. This, essentially, it allows you, it allows me to have an actual domain name for my WAN IP, which can and does change every now and again when the ISP decides to lease new ones. Uh, so, with this enabled, I don't have to worry about remembering my IP every time I want to access my VPN, for example. I can just type in my address and boom. Uh, you know, it's uh, as easy as that. And um, NAT pass through, this is enabled because I want to use the VPN, so that's that. Um, as far as the other settings, uh, you can use Alexa to set things up with this thing, you know, just as uh, and um, IFTTT as well. I'm not using any of that because I prefer to just log in manually. There's IPv6, which I'm not using. Next up is VPN. And yes, there are four servers and six clients. And yes, they are across the network. Um, you can, uh, I do have a PPTP server. So if I click on the PPTP up here, um, this is all set up for my use. Uh, I can access my network from anywhere in the world. I can even sit there and you know put the lights on from anywhere in the world I can print from anywhere in the world I can uh, access any computers and all that it, it, it's you know the, the joys of basically having a, your own VPN is basically yeah <laughs> and then next up we have the client which I'm not using because um, well I got my own server so I'm happy with that next up we got firewall now you we all know what that does but next up, uh, 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 among the firewall settings, we actually have, um, you can filter out URLs. So just in case, I don't know, say you have kids and you don't want them to access some websites, this is where you enter the URL for that website. You can filter out keywords and you can filter out services. Uh, up to the point where you can set up uh, certain services to work on certain devices between certain hours on certain days of the week. Uh, so it goes that far, basically. So if you like your parental controls, this is the tab for you. Um, well, the uh, services, the services tab. Anyway, next up we have administration. This is cool. Um, this is where you set up your. This is where you you set what the, you want the machine to do. Basically, uh, system-wise, um, you know, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Your password, your your uh, uh, account time and date you can set your uh, access uh, well this interface you can set it to go through HTTP, HTTPS if you want so all that stuff you can have you doing here next up firmware upgrade uh, firmware upgrade which is well firmware upgrade basically so this is where you do that you can do it straight from here which is pretty cool next up restore save upload settings this is cool uh, so you can save your settings as a file uh, so just in case you reset the router, then you know, because obviously if you reset, then the whole thing just uh, you lose everything. So there's that. Next up, you can see the temperature um, of the CPU and the system, and uh, you know the Wi-Fi uh, radios and all that. Um, next up, what can I show you? That's the privacy bit. Uh, obviously, if you want to opt out from Alexa and uh, air protection, and blah blah blah. That's where you do. And then uh, we have the system, uh, the system log. This shows you uh, what's happening in the system uh, with the um, uh, with all the connections and everything. Wireless log, um, same thing, but one for the Wi-Fi. Um, DHCP leases. This is cool. It shows you how much uh, time we got left for each lease. IPv6 again. I'm not using routing table. There's a few routes here set up, uh, well, which are being used. Port forwarding again. Um, that's that um, set up for the virtual server, and um, uh, the connections. This is uh, essentially shows you just the the, the request, uh, the uh, the IP requesting things and uh, destination IPs, and uh, uh, if the connection is established, which is cool because you, if you want to troubleshoot stuff, um, you can. So. Next up, we have network analysis. Now, this is uh, this is useful because you can ping websites from here. So, say you want to ping, say I'm setting up to ping uh, one of these websites, like you know Google, for example. I'm setting up uh, one 
a value of 1 in there. So what it does is it pings Google. Now, why would you want to use this? For example, if you want to set up your... Um, if you're, using, if you're trying a new DNS or some network settings or a different connection, uh, you can just uh, essentially sit there and type in uh, some IP. So you can ping in every, whatever server and check for lag and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you wanna, you know, before you stream, for example, or, or there's so many uses for this. You know, it can just go on and on. Uh, net statistics. Um, that's net statistics. Obviously, if you wanna uh, network details, you can have. Well, you can diagnose things basically if uh, there's a problem. Wake on LAN. This is useful uh, if you've got any PCs which are set up to wake on LAN, then you can wake them up on LAN. This is where you set that up basically. And the Smart Connect rule. This enables load balance across each uh, each radio. Um, I'm not using it because I don't actually have that many uh, clients, but uh, it's here and it can be used. And yeah, that's the that's the advanced stuff. Now the easy stuff. Um, that's the main page. Uh, next up, we got the uh, the guest network, which I do. I have one um, set up for the um, uh, set up on my uh, uh, high range, well, long range uh, uh, radio here, um, which I don't think I actually mentioned in the wireless. So going back to the wireless, I just want to mention this before I forget. Basically, um, the five uh, the five gigahertz second radio is has its own antennas and its own system is separate for the first one and is using the high channels. So this has a better reach and less interference because not a lot of people actually use uh, use that. And I got that. That's my kind of my main access. Um, and then the this the first radio uses the lower channels as you can see here um, and um, shares antennas with the uh, 2.4 anyway back to back to the easy stuff so AI protection this is really cool this is one of my favorite thing about the uh, things about this router because basically what this does is it replaces an antivirus so for example um, this is the many this is the amount of events that it's been doing since that date um, so it protected uh, all of the devices, uh, you know, there's like AdSense and you'd like all that shit that you spam and you don't want any of that. So basically what it does, it just protects you from that. Um, and again, uh, uh, IPS, um, you know, uh, this is vulnerable, uh, uh, such as if you're doing, I don't know, you could like... Uh, ransomware and it protects you from DDoSes and that this is where that kind of thing happens if in case you are being attacked it's not gonna get past that um, infected devices there are none because it's doing a good job and parental controls yeah there's uh, some extra stuff you can set up here but the main the main bit is really in the firewall tab uh, when it comes to that now uh, quality of service this is cool you can have uh, web history to start with obviously I'm not using because that would be ridiculous because uh, I don't don't care what people do online. Um, what I have here is basically what you see on the classification is this shows you all of no. So it shows what it shows you what the devices are doing and what kind of service that they're using. So basically, you're just anal using this to analyze the situation and then you're making the set the settings in here if that makes sense. Uh, you can do adaptive quality of service or just sit there and just ban with limit everything manually if you want which I have done as you can see here uh, with a machine that's not in the network anymore anyway uh, the bandwidth monitor this is speaks for itself it just shows you what each device is doing next up traffic analyzer uh, the first tab is a monitor uh, which is just the monitor basically that's that's that but the second tab is another uh, um, another graph and this shows you the amount of traffic for example if you set it to monthly then it shows you the amount of monthly traffic across the network and it shows you each client in here each client how much they used and on what so say you're in a shared house environment and you're sharing the network bill the internet bill and then 
basically what you do is you come in here and have a look at uh, who's used uh, the most internet so you kind of you can spread the bill around in a way that makes more sense instead of just uh, you know if you want to do that um, game boost uh, this is a, a version of VPN so that you can get to the servers faster for less roots uh, this is offered by ASUS uh, I'm not using it because I'm not a gamer so that's pretty much that now USB application this is the servers this is where you set up servers. Servers as, uh, you know, anything from like, you know, file sharing. Uh, I haven't got this uh, enabled because I don't need that much security because it's, it's all um, it's all done through Windows. But I do have the Samba server uh, online, which is uh, sharing my USB memory stick, which is downstairs that I've shown you. Uh, obviously, uh, the SMB server is not enabled in Windows 10 by default so just in case you're using this kind of thing make sure that you enable it uh, next up you have your own cloud uh, well you can set up your own cloud by following uh, by typing in your own IP your uh, one IP you can access uh, uh, the storage you can set up a cloud disk of your own which sits at home with you you know where it is you know what happens to it but I'm not using it because obviously because I've got VPN set up, but yes, you can. You, you can set up. Uh, you can download the app on Google Play, or you can um, uh, set up, uh, uh, set it up via your uh, um, IP. Or in this case, I'm using the DDNS, so just my address basically. So yes, you can do that. Uh, there's different ways to do it. AI Cloud Sync, you know, the sync server that you need to in, in, use Cloud Sync in the first place if you want to use that. There's settings for it uh, and the log, which uh, shows you what's happening in here, but I'm not using it, so there's nothing there. Uh, and the last thing, we have uh, we have tools. This is essentially just showing you what's inside the machine. Um, you can see that there's a dual-core processor, 1.4 gigahertz, there's 500... Uh, megabytes of RAM, so it's basically as I said, it's 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 a PC. Well, it's not a PC, but it's a computer. It's not your typical kind of router anymore. With the amount of stuff that it does, I mean, you can even sit there and download stuff right off, you know, IPs off of the internet if you want through the uh, uh, through the USB application, which is right here. You can download. Uh, it's basically the download tool. Anyway, so that's the router. Uh, Next, I'm gonna type in the the uh, switch, so the switch address, so that you can see what that's uh, all about. I put in my my password. So as far as the switch goes, this is actually quite simple. Um, system info. This is where well, it shows you what what it's doing basically. IP saying this is where you set your IP. Uh, user account, that's where you set up your user account, uh, tools, you got, you know, you can save your, your config file, you can reboot, you can reset and upgrade the firmware from here. Now, going into the switching side of things, you can uh, port trunk uh, if you want, and uh, this is how you, um, you know, enable disable ports and set a specific speed and duplex, uh, duplex, sorry. Um, uh, settings if your devices are not linking for some reason uh, monitoring um, this is pretty cool it shows you what each port is doing port mirroring you can do sorry you can do port mirroring uh, and cable testing this is cool this is what what this does so say you're, you've got um, a broken cable somewhere now what you do is you select the port where that cable plugs into and what this does is it sends a pulse down the cable and physically what happens is that you, you actually get reflections off of that. It's happening really fast, but it happens. So with really, really fast electronics, you can sit there and tell exactly where the problem is across the cable. Because for example, let's say you have a 10 meter long cable. Now, if I do this, basically return the normal test result. And as I said, this is a 10 meter long cable. Um, and what this is basically is uh, it's reflecting off of the other end of the cable. So that's uh, obviously normal and all the wires are uh, uh, working properly, but if one of them is broken or one, two or more of them are broken, or if all of them are broken, then it's gonna return a different distance because you get a, a, a reflection off of, um, off of where, wherever the problem is, basically. So, because that's how it works, it's pretty cool. That's physics for you right there. 
Next up, we have VLANs. Uh, I'm not using, well, I mean, I am using a port based VLAN, but it's including all the ports. Um, MTU VLAN, this is an interesting kind of VLAN. So, what this does is if you enable this, uh, then the uplink port, um, essentially, that is the only port that can talk to the other port, while none of the other ports can talk to each other. That's kind of how this works, uh, if you have that kind of needs. Uh, and then there's uh, 802.q VLAN, um, which I'm not using, as I said, I'm using port based because I'm not I'm not subnetting, so there's no point uh, using that. Quality of service, which is port based, uh, again, pretty much basic. Bandwidth control, you can limit bandwidth across uh, 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 certain ports. But obviously, um, I can do that from the from the router, so there's no point doing it from here. Uh, yeah, and save config basically, and that's that's that. That's that's the switch. As I said, it's pretty simple. And then last but not least, we have the the Virgin Media Hub. Uh, there's no point logging in because it's just gonna tell you that it's working in modem mode, even though it says router up here. It's actually in modem mode. Um, but this is uh, this is the modem status. I don't know why they use that termination because it's incorrect. Anyway, um, so you can see under your downstream, you can see uh, the amount of channels you're using, uh, uh, what frequency you're at, uh, the, the modulation scheme, um, you know, um, uh, levels. If you're over, if you're clipping them, if you're not clipping, whatever. All that is basically in here. Upstream, the same thing. Config. This is this is the config. Uh, you have with them and the uh, network log basically this shows you your as i said before your connection to the cmts and uh, what's happening in case there's problems with their network this is where you look for that yeah so um i think that's pretty much that pretty much covers uh that pretty much covers uh the whole thing oh that was a lot of talking <laughs> anyway um what i'm gonna do next i'm gonna edit Oh, come on, it's 11 o'clock. I can tell that because the lights behind me have changed color. So, I'm just going to switch switch back to purple because that looks, that looks nicer, doesn't it? There you go. That's what I had before. Yeah, as I said, I have the Philips Hue light system so you can change the color. You can, you know, select your colors uh, and whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm hoping that it made sense to you. Um, it makes a lot of sense to me as a user because uh, especially in a home environment, these are really cool devices that allow you to do a lot of stuff that normally, uh, you know, is much more difficult to set up. So from the perspective of a home user, this makes it does make a lot of sense, this kind of gear, because uh, it's not complicated as you see, as you've seen, it's uh, it, it, and it, it just works. And no, Asus routers are not bad. They're pretty good. I mean, I've had mine for, well, for since 2016, I think now, and it's it's been running non-stop basically ever since, and I haven't got a problem with it. So, yeah, again, it's called the Asus RT AC5300. Uh, have a look at it online. And if you have any other questions, I can help. Maybe, maybe I can't, but don't hesitate to ask anyway, because... You know, it's, um, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.